I'm Sean Ryan. I lead the platform team here at uh, Facebook. I'm uh, so here to talk about games. We, I could repeat the Google presentation from before this because it's pretty much the similar one we give. You should test icons. You should use analytics. You should do all that, and that's good. It is not a problem. We'll take it up a little bit higher level. Uh, talk quickly about games. So games are big. There are a couple of amazing stats in here, though. That's really first is two billion gamers. So two billion gamers, a level that no one would have appreciated 10, 20 years ago when many of us were in the few hundreds of millions playing. And two, how diverse it is. Bill and I were just talking about this before, is that as much as mobile continues to grow and is now between mobile and tablet the largest category, you still look up at desktop, you look at PC MMO, handheld's been uh, slow since it's 3DS, and you just see enormous numbers. This is like GDPs of large countries. And so it's not just about mobile and tablet, it's really about all of it. And how do you look at the numbers and the fact that most of those categories are growing, and how do you take advantage of that? And we'll talk about that a bit. So first we gotta have a call out to our Israeli friends. As everybody knows, uh, we have some awesome developers here in Israel. Happy to be here in Tel Aviv. I remember going to Jessica's first Casual Connect, what seems like 10 plus years ago in Seattle. Basically a room of this size for the entire event in Seattle, and it was a bunch of downloadable, game com downloadable games. And now to look at where we've gone, where we are here in Israel, fountain of awesome developers with developers from all over the world. So Israeli developers have 13 of our top 100 games on desktop. Uh, it's an amazing number for a relatively small country. Certainly comes from a couple key players. Clearly you've got our friends at Playtika with Slotomania, the global leader across enormous amount. These are publicly traded numbers because their parent company is public. So think about that, 50 million in net income last quarter for Playtika in the social casino business. And obviously amazing games. But then you switch over to Plarium, another local company. Strategy. So although Israel has often been a fountain of casino games, Plarium came at it from a different angle and from day one said, we want to be the leader in strategy games. And what you see is six of our top 100 games are Plarium. And then in mobile, starting to grow in strength as well. And it's not just the big two, as we refer to them as, but also you see increasingly a number of up and coming companies. Especially we look up there, Jelly Button and Tabtail in particular have come up. And we're just seeing more and more growth here. So it's still, every time we come here, I'm amazed at the amount of ambition, the amount of activity and some awesome games, not just in the traditional uh, casino category, but across the range. Let's talk about us and, face and games. So when Mark launched the platform eight years ago, nine years ago, our CEO, we didn't know what was gonna happen. It was before my time at the company. And to our surprise, games was 98% of the platform. This is on desktop back in the day. So games have been an absolute core part of Facebook and continue to be so going forward as we transition from desktop to mobile and other areas. Games are one of our largest advertising categories, still a massive revenue category for us on desktop, and the numbers for what our users do, what our consumers do, is play games. That's why we still love games and why we continue to invest in it. It's not just about the revenue, it's really about how do we help you make great games. And that's what Bob Slynn's team here does in Europe, a team in Asia, a team in the US, is really, and our partner engineering team at Agareth. How do we get together with you and make great games? It's not necessarily about desktop games. We had a strange conversation last night with someone who said, I didn't want to advertise on desktop because it's pointing to an off desktop game. And we said, that's just fine. We're, we're here to help you be successful with your games. Sometimes it'll be organic, sometimes it'll be paid, Sometimes it'll be desktop, sometimes it'll be mobile. We are the horizontal platform. We want you to succeed across all the categories where your game makes sense, not just one. So we'll talk here for a second. Uh, you'll be seeing a little bit less of me because we have a new leader for the games team. So I've been running the games team for about five years here at Facebook, and Leo just joined us this week. Uh, he's still in orientation, uh, and we'll throw him on the road shortly, but an experienced game veteran. And uh, it's a fact that we continue to invest into this category, bringing a whole new set of leadership and management in. I'll still be around, I'm not going anywhere, but uh, I wanna make sure that we've got some new, new blood, new, new eyes on this category. 
as we continue to invest in it. So these are the pillars we've always had. And I want to call out a couple of them right here. How do we help you build? Login we know, app links parse. We've been helping you guys build games for a long time. Really when you look at Grow, is really where we're focused. We have F8 coming up, our developer conference in April, and uh, GDC as well. So we'll talk some more there. But essentially the two I want to call out there are app invites. So invites were historically only if you had a Canvas game. It was an easier way to get people. It was viral, it was organic, it was free. Now we have the same thing for mobile only games. So yeah, if you haven't tried app invites, give it a shot. It is just an easier way to get what makes uh, inviting friends so easy on Facebook into your mobile only game. Second is analytics, similar to what Google just talked about before us. We have analytics for apps, which goes across, obviously, all the platforms. Because at the end of the day, we are horizontal. We want to make sure we can measure, help you measure, help you grow, help you monetize across all platforms, not just one app store, not just desktop. And on the monetization side, audience network and LiveRail. LiveRail was a company we purchased last year in the video space. How do we help you make money? Not just on helping you monetize through virtual goods, but we know that that's not the only way, that advertising is increasingly a larger percentage of how everybody makes money. And Audience Network and Live Rail are some of the best ways out there to help you monetize your game. At the end of the day, only 2% of your players are ever going to pay. 98% of them at some point need to generate revenue. It doesn't mean they don't have value in a social game, but at some point they understand the trade-off that there will be some sort of ad component in addition to the paid component, and most mature game developers are moving to this. We're even seeing it in casino right now. We're seeing hidden object games. Everybody gets worried about this, about driving away potential payers. If they haven't paid in three months or six months or nine months, they're not going to pay. So why not monetize them in some you know, effective way? You're not trying to drive away payers. But everybody should be looking at how to put advertising into your games. It doesn't mean you do it in the first time they show up. It doesn't mean you show it to your payers. It doesn't mean there's lots of ways to do this. But through Audience Network, Live Rail, and many of the other reward video opportunities that are out there, everybody should be looking at how to monetize their game in different ways. Obviously, the number we like, the amount of games launched last year using some element of Facebook. But let's talk about what we really focus on, and again, cross-platform. We are, at the end of the day, the horizontal layer that connects consumers of all types. We put a layer out there, and then we look and see what people do with it, and then we build more tools to help them. So that's what we did with games. Games we originally put out there as part of a generic platform, and then as we saw that gamers and game developers were using it, we started to build up a team around it. So that's really where we're focused right now, is we see that although Flash, in spite of a lot of comments, Flash is actually a great desktop gaming platform, but we understand that as you look at mobile, as you look at other aspects, trying to maintain a Flash team just for Facebook or other uh, desktop platforms is hard. So there's a lot of effort going on on our side, on the engineering side, on the business side, to see how we can work with you with the new web technologies. So if you're making an HTML5 game, if you're making any type of WebGL game, come talk to us. We want to work through with you how to get a great cross-platform experience uh, in addition to all the other help we always give. So right here, numbers across here. Everybody talks about desktop. Key numbers I want to point out there is one, PS4 integrated into the console and one should presume more other integrations coming. Two, League of Legends recently, introduced, re recently integrated us. Because at the end of the day, you want to play with your friends. You want to make it easy to find people to play with across all platforms. So it's not just desktop, it's not just mobile, it's not just console, it's MMOs, it's RPGs, it's the entire category, and that's what we help you do. Here. Facebook, we continue to invest in it in the desktop experience. There's no question that when you look at the numbers, and our numbers are public, that desktop gaming for us is starting on the long, slow goodbye. It's going to be a long and a slow one, uh, and we're investing heavily into it to maintain it and to make sure that you, all of you have profitable games. But what we also have to do is make sure that we are working with you to lower your costs, 
to increase your revenue, to increase your targeting, so that you can make the most efficient, most fun, most profitable game you can. Some of that's on Canvas, there's no question. We spend a lot of time on Canvas, and we have games continuing to do well on it. In addition, here's a good example, a local company, uh, Pirates right here, which is a WebGL game. So it came out, we're, if for those of you working in Unity, WebGL still coming along, 5.02 right now, Next version's coming. We work closely with them on making sure that you have a good uh, user experience. You need the browsers to come along. You need lots of other things. But if you've got a WebGL game that you think is really compelling, come talk to us. We're really interested in helping promote true cross-platform games, and we think Unity WebGL is gonna be one of those options. Next one is HTML5. So HTML5, this is Family Guy. Big hit on mobile. Brought it out on Canvas about two months ago working through with them right now. HTML5, not perfect for every game, but still for a bunch of games, it makes a lot of sense. How do you, again, make your game as efficient as possible, productive as possible? Let's work with you on this. We're also working on some streaming uh, technologies. So one is a company called OneApp, uh, which is a US-based company, kind of like a Gaikai, allows you to take your Android APK and stream it to Canvas with all of the, uh, all of the social plugins that come along with it. Love to, again, all these things are new, but as you're looking, especially out here with these developers, some of the most creative developers in the world, how do we help you make a great cross-platform game that is truly global? This is not just about one country, one platform. It's about all games, all countries. We understand it's all new, but we're the platform to come help, find, help you do that. And that's about it for my CAN presentation. Many of you have seen this before. I know many of you. We can talk about them. I want to live more, leave more room for Q&A. But the theme here at the end of the day is games matter a great deal to us. We continue to invest in them. And games for us are not about Canvas or even about mobile. It's about wherever your consumers want a game, there's going to be the ability to work with Facebook. And increasingly, by the way, if you haven't tried it, there's a little bit of buzz right now. If you haven't tried advertising on Instagram, that's the place to go right now. Video on Instagram. I'm not here to sell ads, there's a whole other team that does that, but what we try and do with our developers is say, where are the opportunities? And right now, there's starting to be some developers who are crushing it right now on Instagram because we haven't seen much gaming out there. Uh, and so that's our hint of the day on that one. If you haven't tried it, give it a shot. How about questions? Q&A, anybody? Hi. Um, I saw about a year ago, I don't know if you're familiar with um, some publications that Facebook uh, trying to do a test about um, in-app purchase install ads that um, kind of uh, helping developers, I think it was only in Canvas and on in mobile, trying to help developers to promote their game or by you know uh, running some freebies uh, that they can attach to an ad, they can download and get it uh, once they install the ad. So my question, how was it? I didn't see some other things about it. Please you can well, share if, this. Well, if you haven't seen it since then, it probably didn't go well. Uh, so we, here's the issue right now. It, at our size now, we can't really run any tests anymore without someone noticing. And so if we run a 1% test, th that's you know 15 million people seeing it. So it's kind of hard to keep our tests private. Uh, but what I'd say is we work with many of you, and, and, and what we all say is, if you're a leading edge developer willing to work with us, we want to try things. And we try things all the time, and many of them fail. And so we move on to the next thing. So I'll give you an idea. Right now on the front door of Facebook.com, we have nine different tests running right now on how to display games to people who have played once this week, twice this week, five times this week, seven times this week. Lots of tests. And then what happens, a developer will call us and say, I saw this. Here's the screenshot. How do I get that? And it's just a test we're running. So in many cases, chat's a good example. Many of you have seen the chat window we're running next to a bunch of games. And when are we getting it? I don't like it, I like it, how do I get this? I saw that. We are banging away on a bunch of things. And so that example of the install one was something we tested and didn't necessarily work out. One of the areas we've been testing, which is really interesting, is in the MMO or large thick client space, is in feed, how do, we make sh how do we make it much easier for you to get an ad from feed, install, and uh, go from there? So that's a test we've been running for a while. Most of these tests, the nature of them are, we have to run it for a month, and then we back check it for another month. So the nature of it when you're running 10, 20 tests at a time, 
it just takes a while. It's confusing for all of us. I can't even remember which test, what's real at this point because what gatekeeper I'm in. Uh, so uh, any issues, reach out to our team. But in a lot of cases, this is just an early stage test and we're not ready yet to roll it out to more people. Okay, next. Any questions over here? You're pointing. Ah. Okay, moving to the front of the room. We have two people. Um, with the increase of uh, new peripherals, uh, new platforms that you can play games on, uh, virtual reality, Google, uh, with their Chromecast, uh, Apple TV, those sorts of things, what's Facebook doing these days to try to integrate that into their, their own platform? Well, I think we've made a couple bets. Messenger and WhatsApp are certainly one bet, uh, and there's a lot of discussion about games. We're not ready yet to go there. You know, best way to look at this is, our, all of our products are in different stages of growth. And so PC and mobile are in the revenue stage, and you look at something like a Messenger or WhatsApp, and they're in the growth stage, and you look at something like Instagram is just moving into revenue, and Oculus is very early days. So we believe heavily in VR. We've demonstrated it with an acquisition, many more bolt-on acquisitions, and 2016 is gonna be a big year for us in VR with Oculus. It's still early. I would encourage everybody, if you have room, to try it out, to, if you have room in your teams, to everybody loves to test on VR. But it's early trying to figure out what is effective. Not just is it early for the technology, not just for us, for Morpheus, for HCD, HTC. It's really just early trying to figure out what makes an effective game in VR. And so it's, uh, it's like if you ever saw when 3D movies became very big about five, 10 years ago, it seemed like I have kids, so I had to go to a lot of them. It seems like every movie you go to, there's things rushing at you at all times. And it's awful because what they did was just say, well, it's 3D, we should have things rush at you. Uh, and it turned out the movie wasn't very good. So I think VR is a huge bet for us, and we've shown that with the Oculus, and there's a whole team devoted to that. Uh, and then second, Messenger is still an area that we haven't committed to yet on that type of functionality. We're certainly looking. If you look at a WeChat or a Line or a Kakao, you certainly see in Asia, you see a much deeper integration between games and Messenger, Messenger or mobile messengers. At the moment, and David Marcus has talked about this a lot in Wired and a couple other articles, we're just focused on other areas. So when we look at some of the other platforms, it's not clear any of them have size yet. I think the Apple, uh, potential Apple platform is really interesting. Uh, it's just early. And so it really comes down to what are the benefits of logging in with Facebook? Usually it's finding friends, uh, pre-populating fields that already get there quickly, uh, being able to click into news feed. So uh, we're spending a bunch of time, we've been running some tests off and on with eSports and live gaming. Not so much us, we work with partners to do this. At the end of the day, gaming is incredibly important to two billion people. And we wanna make sure that we're in the middle of it for, uh, because it's our consumers that demand it when you look at what they spend their time on. And clearly we have developers that, game developers are the most dynamic developers in the world who use and absolutely abuse our system in a way that's awesome. So you see, as soon as there's a loophole, any way for our system to be used, game developers are there first and foremost. It's not always pretty by the time it's done, but it is, does show the advantages. Uh, I'll give you an idea, it's not just games. We, uh, in, we were talking to Instagram the other day. We noticed that there's a bunch of sites, on, a bunch of pages on Instagram where all the photos go up and are taken down every single day. We thought it's really strange. Why would you take down the photos every single day? And the answer is they're using it for commerce. It's a store. So in Southeast Asia, there's a bunch of people using it for a store. And when they have inventory, they put up the photo. And when the inventory is gone, they take it down. That's a great example of non-game developers using a platform that wasn't built in that way but it's fascinating how, and we, as we watch that, we try and see how can we take advantage of that. Same things with game developers. When game developers come to us with some really creative way to use our various platforms, we're open to it. It's not a problem at all. It's a matter of making sure there's a mix, a balance between the consumer experience, the developer experience, and Facebook. Uh, just any innovation on uh, wearables with gaming on Facebook? You know, I, on a personal basis, I'm not <laughs> such a big fan. I, I just think it's, it's hard to get that excited. Uh, it, wearables are often attached to location-based. So everybody should tell me about their one location-based game they've heard of that worked. <laughs> oh wait, there isn't one. Um, so, uh, so realistically, location-based games are tough. At the end of the day, and wearables tend to be attached to that. Uh, clearly, if you want to play something on your wrist, that's different. But by a wearable, meaning somehow location-based is 
really hard to program for. We've been I've been looking at location based games for 15 years now, and uh, it the constraints it places on you and wearables are a large part of that are not as interesting as being able to have it without the constraints. So I think wearables are interesting, but I think quite niche-like, and so it's not where I would spend more time. Really, when I look right now, it is VR, VR, and VR. Uh, it's early, but this has that wave of more and more friends of ours are starting studios of figuring out the different ways this is gonna work. It's not all gonna be $50 million titles in the beginning, because the installed base isn't there. It's gonna be small, bite-sized titles, ones that hit a niche with that early audience, that, to me, is the most exciting thing going on in gaming today. And if there are any more questions specifically, there's a bunch of folks around here with the Facebook t-shirts on. They can answer them in a far greater detail than I can. But I'm also happy to talk to anybody afterwards. Thanks so much for the support. Looking forward to seeing you guys some more.